Bruce Lawn. So let's talk about Romans 14, 1 Corinthians 8. Let's talk about this. This is going to be the last time I talk about this passage. This has been discussed. And again, uh, listen, watch till the very end. Please do me that solid. If you're here and you, you've you used causing someone to stumble as a means to demean, to disrespect, to speak ill of somebody because they may cause somebody to stumble. We're going to cover this passage. It's going to be my last time covering this passage. I ask all you guys, please watch till the very end as we're going to get into some dicey scriptures and we're going to unpack this, okay? And this is going to potentially offend some of you guys, but it's going to offend some of you guys for the good. It's probably going to offend everybody here to some degree, regardless on where you are on the issue of liberty and what have you. So do me a solid watch till the end, because I think you will find value from it. And I got some commentaries and I got some stuff so that you just, you don't think, you don't think it's just me projecting my bias and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, I got slides, the whole bit. So let's just jump into it. Now, whenever we're reading about passages in scripture, it's important that we understand the context, the context, meaning who, when, why, where, What's going on? These are two different passages. They kind of parallel each other. One is written to the Corinthian church that are not Jewish believers. Okay. So it's written to folks that are not uh, Jews that became Christians. And then in Romans 14, this is written to Jewish people in Rome. So there's two different contexts that are written here, but they're more or less saying the same thing. So I'm going to read both. I'm going to read you guys some commentary, and then I'm going to give you guys some points with regards to this. So let's check it out. First Corinthians chapter eight, verse one. Now about food sacrifice to idols. What uh, we know that w- we know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not know yet as they ought to know, but whoever loves God is known by God. So then, so he starts out and he says, listen, it's not about your knowledge. It's ultimately about your love for people. It's ultimately about your love for people. And he says, verse 4, so then about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one God. So Paul out the gate says, hey, an idol that, you know, people offering sacrifices to idols, an idol is an, an, an inanimate object. There's, there's, it's, it's, it's not a thing, okay? There's no God but one God. And then verse 5 says, for even if there are so-called gods, lowercase g, if even if there are so-called gods, lowercase g, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods, lowercase g, and lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things come for, uh, came and from whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. Verse 7, but not everyone possesses this knowledge. So he's saying, listen, we know that idols aren't a thing. They're not real gods. They're idols. They're inanimate objects, okay? He says, but not everyone knows this knowledge. Not everyone has this knowledge. Some people are still accustomed, are so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificed foods, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god, and since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. So to you and me, we may not see an issue with doing uh, eating certain food sacrificed to idols, but to the person that is coming from a pagan culture where that's what they used to do, they're not getting it, and they still think it is defiled because their conscience is weak. Verse 8, but food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat and no better if we do eat. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block. There's that word, the stumbling block. You guys love to use this word. We're going to get into it. A stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience, remember, this is the weaker brother. This is a weak conscience, okay? If someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge, eating in what? Where's he eating? Eating in an idol's temple. Won't that person be emboldened to eat with a sacrifice to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause them to fall. Now, let me give you guys some commentary. This is from gotquestions.org. Let me, let me bring this to life, just so you guys don't think I'm cherry-picking and I'm making stuff up. This is from gotquestions.org. Right here, he says, The weaker brother is not someone who simply objects to a certain practice, but one who is in danger of falling into sin. So let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just be clear. Someone that is claiming a weak conscience is someone who 
is in danger. It's, it's not just about objecting to a certain practice. It's someone that is in danger of falling into sin. I said this last time, knowledge of liberty is not the same as causing someone to stumble. You guys may have knowledge of my liberties. I have liberties to have tattoos. I have liberties to eat meat. I have liberty, I, I talk about my liberty to watch Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle. You having knowledge of my liberty doesn't cause you to sin. So that's, that's not what that's saying. This is talking about someone who's in danger of falling into sin. To illustrate, and check out the illustration, let's say there are two first century Christians named Demetrius and Clement. Both are former idolaters, okay? So they both followed other gods. Now, saved by faith in Christ, Demetrius shuns everything to do with this old way of life. Some of us go through this season. Some of you guys get saved. You shun everything with your old way of life. You stop listening to secular music. You stop watching secular TV. You stop watching anything, and you go through a season of just complete purging. Okay, respect. The one person does that. Demetrius shuns everything to do with his old life, including the meat sold in the marketplace, because for him, because for him, eating such meat would constitute a return, a return to paganism. Okay, some of you guys listening to secular music was your religion. That rap music was your God. And therefore, when you got saved, you needed to get away and say, I'm not going to listen to this for a season. For others of us, rap music ain't never been my God, ever. Okay, so I, I, I've never sacrificed idols at the, at the tabernacle of Jay-Z. Okay, I've never stood at the altar of Nas. This, this is significant. Some of you guys, it is worship for you. It was worship for you. Let's keep going. Clement avoids the temple and refuses to participate in the pagan festivals, but, so, so he has some boundaries. He says he avoids the temple, refuses to participate in the pagan festivals, but he has no problem with eating meat uh, from the market. Clement understands correctly that an, an idol has no power to corrupt good meat, and, and for him, Eat, eating such meat is a non-issue. Uh, Ruslan stopped smoking weed and doing some of the debauchery attached with hip-hop music. However, I didn't stop listening to hip-hop music because I understand that there, no genre of music in and of itself is evil. There's no genre that's evil. There's no dance position that in and of itself is evil. So dance. It's bodies moving because they don't have power. They don't have power, right? That an idol has no power to corrupt good meat. And for him, eating such meat is a non-issue. For me, consuming hip-hop is a non-issue because these are not idols in my life. Then one day, as both men are in the marketplace, Demetrius sees Clement eating meat that was sacrificed to idols. Demetrius is horrified, but Clement laughs it off and encourages Demetri to eat some. When Demetri hesitates, Clement cuts off a piece and hands it to him. He hands it to him. Okay, Demetrius, emboldened by Clement's confidence, eats the meat. Biblically, both believers have sinned. Biblically, both believers have sinned. Clement sinned by violating the conscience of a fellow believer. Demetrius sinned in that he essentially returned to idolatry. At least that's his conscience telling him. More importantly, Demetrius is learning how to ignore his conscience, a very dangerous thing to learn. Okay, so... You, you, could, you could fit in the blank to, to whatever issue you want there, okay? But that is, that is what that's talking about. So, so, so just to review, let me just give you guys a, a couple points, and then we'll jump into uh, the next passage. Let's just be clear. What is a stumbling block, okay? A stumbling block is something that causes someone direct sin. Knowledge is not the same. So a stumbling block is something that causes someone direct sin. That is what that is saying. A stumbling block is something that causes somebody to directly sin, Okay? A stumbling block is not about hypothetical people. Stop with the hypotheticals. Someone, somewhere, could potentially find out that Ruslan, listening to Dave Chappelle, is going to cause them and go on a bender of Dave Chappelle and then sin. No, stop talking about hypothetical people. Ruslan, I have a problem with you uh, having tattoos because some 13-year-old somewhere is going to find out that you have tattoos and then go and get an illegal tattoo. That's a hypothetical. You're more tight about your, your, your bias and your culture against tattoos and maybe the idols that tattoos held for you, but that, that has nothing to do with me having the liberty to have a tattoo. This is a hypothetical. And I said with the hypotheticals, I did a whole video yesterday. I did a whole video yesterday, and I said, listen, if you're hypothetically being caused to sin by Chandler Moore's wife twerking on him, 
you need to you need to you need to get off social media. And I gave you guys, I heard you. I said, you know what? Here's let's have a real talk about lust. I gave I think one of the most important videos I made uh, ever, and specifically about how to conquer lust. I, I heard you. I heard you. There's people that are struggling with lust. Respect. Here's some here's some free game on how I was able to beat a, a decade long porn addiction. Someone somewhere could do this. No, we're talking about you. You find offense to it, okay? Is the offense warranted the outrage? That was my question in that video. Remember, my question was, I don't know if this requires the outrage that it has. Now let's keep going. And it's not about knowledge of liberty. I've said this before. You having knowledge of liberty is not the same as someone causing you to stumble. Knowledge of liberty is not the same as someone causing you to stumble. That's, it's even, that's, that's even if it's you. Because again, we're talking about hypotheticals. When and when we take stuff that's not a direct sin, it's not causing somebody to directly sin. It's a hypothetical about some person somewhere and you're, and, and you're saying that just knowledge of this activity can potentially cause some person somewhere to sin. Friend, you're being spiritually manipulative. You're not e we're not even talking about, we're not even talking about real deal situations, okay? So that, that's, that's why I push back and I say, listen, friend, alcohol, is a real trigger to someone somewhere. But knowledge of Jesus drinking alcohol is not causing you to stumble. Because then, what you're saying is the scriptures caused you to stumble. That is hogwash. Knowledge of Jesus drinking alcohol does not cause you to stumble. Knowledge, if you're a vegan, knowledge that Paul ate meat does not cause you to stumble if you're a vegan. Think about the logical conclusion on if we're not talking about direct sin, we're not we're, we're talking about hypothetical people, and we're talking about knowledge of just knowledge of someone's liberty is going to cause you to stumble. Then the, by that logic, we could just say everything causes me to stumble. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, uh, I don't like, I don't like country music. It causes me to stumble. Get out of here! But some people play that same exact card in church, don't they? Oh, I just, I just don't like, I just don't like hip hop music. So I'm supposed to not make rap music and listen to rap music because you don't like some. It's a, is this about preference? Is it about preference? Because we're not talking about preference. We're talking about something that causes somebody to stumble. So let me, let me explain to you in a modern day context of how this plays out. Let's just hypothetically say that Ruslan, uh, Ruslan drinks alcohol. I don't, by the way. But let's, just, let's just, just, just do this thought experiment. Me causing you to stumble is not me saying, guys, Ruslan has a drink occasionally with his wife. Or I would even go to the extent to say, Ruslan has a drink occasionally with his wife and I post me and my wife having dinner with a glass of wine. And you see that, okay? I don't, I don't think it's that. Me causing you to stumble is knowing that you are a recovering alcoholic and you have 30 days sober and you have your first coin and me inviting you over for dinner and pouring you up a glass of brew and being like, here, bro. Have some brew. I brewed it myself. It's good. Mm. That is what's causing someone to stumble. It's not, it's not a hypothetical. And it's not about knowledge of liberty. Okay? So, I'm, I'm telling you guys, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna jump into Romans 14. I'm telling you guys, this is the last time I'm going to talk about this. Because actually what Romans starts with. So no, 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 let's go to Romans 14. Accept the one who is weak in faith without quarreling over disputable matters. If you deal with alcohol, secular music, um, twerking, you, th you, think it's a, you think it's wrong for my wife to twerk on me or a married woman to twerk on her, like whatever, whatever that thing is, maybe because you come from that culture and a, a woman dancing for her husband is always completely debaucherous for you. If you come from that, okay, respect, respect, respect. Um, I'm not going to dispute with you over that. You are the weaker faith. I welcome you in. If you think sex is gross, if you think twerking is gross, if you think alcohol is gross, if you think secular music is gross, if you think uh, meat is gross, if you, okay, I'm gonna respect. I'm gonna I'm gonna welcome you in, and I'm not even I'm not gonna dispute over this with you. Okay, one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another one, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. So listen to this. Check check out Paul is writing this. Is this is now to the Jews. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them both. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master. 
Servants stand and fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in your own mind. So it's back to your own conscience. If you think some days are more special than other days, if you think these festivals are more special than other festivals, respect. But every person should be convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so unto the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so unto the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so unto the Lord, okay, and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. So he points it back to Jesus. You then, why do you judge your, your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we all stand, we will all stand before God's judgment seat. Verse 11, is it is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account for ourselves. You leaving a nasty comment in Chandler's Instagram, will you give an account for that? And Chandler will give an account. And I will give an account. We will all give an account. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind to not put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, nothing is unclean in and of itself, but if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distrust because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let... Uh, therefore, do not let what you know is good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves in Christ in this way is pleasing to God. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace, to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food or for the sake of liberty. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone to stumble. It is better not to eat or drink wine, or do anything else that will cause your brother to stumble. This is the verse that a lot of you guys will quote. Well, Paul said, Paul said it is, it is better not to eat and not to drink. That's what Paul said, Ruslan. So how, how, how dare you say that we have liberty? Paul said it's better not to eat or drink or cause wine. So here's the deal, friends. Scripture interprets Scripture. Scripture interprets Scripture. Meaning you have to look at the totality. Notice we're going through chapters here. I'm not just giving you one verses. Boom, zinger, wham, psh. I'm giving you guys entire chapters. So one scripture has to interpret scripture. My question to you guys is, there's, uh, the, from a very practical standpoint, ask yourself this question. Did Paul stop eating, drink, uh, stop eating meat and drinking wine? Is that, was, is that the application of this? Is Paul talking about flaunting your liberty in front of them in person and, and offering something to them that they find is weak in their, in their mind and their heart? Or is Paul saying, hey, don't ever eat meat ever again because someone somewhere can find it offensive? Which one is it? Because Paul didn't stop eating meat after he wrote this, guys. And he didn't stop drinking wine. This is a literary device called hyperbole. Okay? In writing and in scripture, there are multiple literary devices, allegory, metaphor, hyperbole. He is driving home the point. Do not put something in front of your brother that is going to cause them to sin. i rather you just never do it again than to flaunt it in front of people. That is what Paul is saying. He is not saying, I will, I'm, I'm literally never going to ever eat, drink, eat, eat, eat you, know, you know, drink alcohol or eat food. That is not what Paul is saying. Paul said to never eat, drink wine again. Yeah, but you won't ever logically apply that. You won't ever logically apply that because anyone, anywhere, some hypothetical person somewhere could find some random thing about your life and says, that causes me to stumble. And then you're going to stop doing it forever? Okay, because if that was the case, we'd have way more Christian vegans, wouldn't we? Why? Because there's Christians, probably in this chat right now, who find meat and the production of meat vastly offensive. We're talking about just offense. There's vegan, Christian vegans who have convictions, strong convictions, can't eat meat because they find meat vastly offensive. The production of meat, how we get our meat, how we treat our animals, so offensive. So by that logic, we would then all have to become vegans. That's not what that passage is saying. It's not about somebody somewhere being offended about some liberty you have. That's not what that's saying, friend. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this full circle to you guys. Except the one who is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. I'm not, I'm, I'm done talking about this. 
If you come on my comment section and you say one more thing about Paul not eating meat to cause somebody to stumble, okay? Matter of fact, all those words are, are, now, are now flagged and your, your comment's just gonna get held. We're, we're not gonna dispute this any longer. This is silly. This conversation is silly because you are inconsistent with how you apply that passage to your own life. Take the plank out of your own eye. There are things that are inconsistent. There are discretionary things that we've all done. The only difference is we didn't have 500,000 Instagram followers when you posted that goofy photo of you at Palm Springs. We've all done something that we shouldn't have done. We just had less eyeballs. In terms of the Chandler Moore thing, what I'm telling you is a woman dancing on her man is not sinful. One. What I'm also telling you is they can take that photo and post it in their house, okay? They can't do that. Me, and I'm going to keep it a buck with you. My wife has danced like that on me before. Yes, she has. Yep. Praise the Lord. Okay? That doesn't cause you to stumble. Okay. Three, if I take a picture of that and I put it up in my house and you come in and you feel a way about it, well, you don't have to come back over. Now, social media, is it an extension of someone's virtual house or is it a public platform? That's where we get into the discre discretionary issue. Is me posting something on my, on my grid the same as me posting something in the virtual home, right? That's the, it, it depends how you look at it. And I think that's where Chandler's apologizing. That's what he's apologizing for. Hey man, like I didn't mean no offense by this guys. This was just an innocent moment. My wife was twerking on me. We were dancing. We took a photo. I thought it was funny. My bad if it offended you, okay? And that's where that discretionary line is. But, but, but if you have an issue with somebody drinking alcohol, I think there's a picture of me and my wife having a, a glass of wine from our wedding, or, or from our honeymoon, rather, in our house. You come into my house, you see a picture of us drinking alcohol. Um, that, 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 that is not a sin. That is not a sin for me to do that, Okay. The sin is maybe I shouldn't post that on Instagram or maybe it's, it's not even saying maybe I'm just maybe I'm just being immature for posting that on 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 social media. Maybe I'm being immature for posting that on social media inside. So I don't want to apologize for it. Respect. What, what more do you guys want for this man? Christian said he shouldn't have apologized to the mom. <laughs> hey, listen, man, I, th I, th I think I think he did good by apologizing. I think he I think he played his part. I think he played his part by apologizing. I know, I know, I know some of us are coming to these situations and we have these predisposed things in our minds and, 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 and maybe because you, hey, maybe you come from going to the club every Friday and twerking on random dudes. And so the thought of a woman twerking on her husband is just so beyond, it's just so beyond what a godly woman would do. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a thing for you. Respect. That doesn't mean that her twerking on her husband is... Um, bad. It, do, it doesn't mean that, okay? If it, in my opinion, it means it's good because the world has taken sex and perverted it. It's made the wrong version of sex. And hey, in Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, chapter eight, it appears she's doing a dance for him. Okay, so just something to think about. Just something to think about. King Stream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. You can check out one of the other videos related to this that'll be over here. Now, I gotta tell you about a free training I have for anyone that is an entrepreneur, a creative, an artist, but maybe you are unsure on how to find your voice, how to find your niche. I have a free training in the description of this video. Check it out. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I will see you on the next video.